Well, all right, folks, here in salvaging Arizona, it is your Saturday, scrapped is your. And today will be a couple new neighborhoods today that I haven't checked out, and I'm also still trying to stick to a route. I've got a couple areas planned out that I mapped out the night before, good old pen and paper. So we're gonna check those out. We'll see what we got. Come along. Pile here has to offer. Okay, I have never been in this neighborhood before. Not a once. First stop, you always forget your tools. Oh, we got a little, a little bit of wire. Yeah, there we go. Got some wires down here. At the bottom of the bag. Yes. Otros. Otros aquí. No. I do know some Spanish from my former career. I learned enough to get by, I'd say. Enough to get by. I could not carry on a conversation or anything, but. Plexiglass or something? But yeah, I did learn a few things. En Espanol. Because the way I thought of it, you really, I mean, living in Arizona, and we had guys that were on for 20, you know, 20 plus years, and they were constantly calling for a Spanish speaking officer to come help them just on a simple vehicle stop. And that's the kind of stuff you should learn, you know. Learn to say, do you know why I stopped you today? Can I see your license? Can I see your registration? Simple things like that, I think you should learn so you can communicate with the people you're dealing with. But there's my little rant there. Got a few more piles here, a few more piles. A lot of totes. It's not there. This is an electrical one. What do you know? Huh? deal with that these electric ones they actually <laughs> they got some decent motors in them believe it or not I'd be surprised looks like some kiddo stuff maybe is this an air hockey game yep and it's got a motor always getting the bed stuff that looks like some pretty heavy duty stuff Wow. Oh, this is, this is light. That's real light. Man. It's always good to stop at a pile of boxes. Big bunch of nothing that'll break down. A little bit of electronics at the bottom here. Not bad, not bad. There we go. Alrighty. There he was. I was driving by, I said, looks like a small pile, but there's probably something there. The Arizona Special. The umbrella. Let's see what all that is there. Oh, these are those gamer chairs. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard people talk about them and they've, uh, a lot of people say very little bit in those and a lot of work. <laughs> but you know what? There's some work. <laughs> I'll take the speaker. Household clean out there. Oh, oh, okay. Light fixtures already. Now we're talking. All right. Don't, don't need a palm leaf with that, Steve-O. <laughs> cool. Oh, Lord. 11 of 78. Wow, mommy, 80th, wow. You see you like the history of people's families. It's kind of, it's interesting, you know? Mom's 80th birthday, pictures from 1978. I don't know, I just, I kind of like that stuff. Furniture, and I think he's running stuff out as we speak, so we'll see. So is it all right if I pick through your uh, stuff there? Thank you, sir. Oh, <laughs> as Mike the scavenger would say, watch your head. Cause that one just <laughs> gave me a little bonk. This is a this is a garage bag. We're taking the whole thing. Yeah, that looks. It's got some electronics and 
metal and whatnot, LED light bulbs. Yeah, well, we'll just take that whole thing right there. And shall take this metal. Ah, yeah, there we go. More metal, metal, metal. Look at the lock parts. All right. Yeah. Oh no. Don't need the party stuff. Oh. Yeah. Not bad at all. Alright. Thank you, sir. Somebody left a whiffle ball bat right out on the road. That was my game as a kid. Me and my friends always used to play whiffle ball. Love that game. Okay, another house clean out. Whenever I see a for sale sign in a pile, that's a good sign for a scrapper. <laughs> the always present shelving, which is nice. A couple wires, scissors, oh, another wire. Okay. Oh, light fixture. There we go. Remote. And with the ballast, Steven. Well, that's uh, that's definitely worth looking into. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> like some artwork. Huh. Paper mache? Or is that plastic? Oh. What is it with register tape? Is Fry's calling me back to work there? Well, I sure as hell ain't going back. Wow, well, well this one held a lot of promise, but uh, such was not the case. Wow. Head frames. Are these the... Yes. These fold down. What some would refer to as the pinch matic And I would have to agree. I think that's it. Okay. More or is it that? That's metal. I don't know what that is, but that's metal. And we'll take all this. Yep. All that. Metal. Metal. And right down we have some more boxes with yep, wire all day long and twice on Saturdays. A little bit of metal. You may see a wire or two there. You know, I know what that is. I don't have one of those. My dad was a woodworker, he had one of those. It's plastic. Little light fixture okay we'll do that phone all right <laughs> okay a little lug little lug wig van beethoven a little bit of metal on the curb and that was awfully nice of them to break it down i know a lot of folks where you live it's very common for folks to break st stuff down when they put it out. And I would say that's not the case. This is one of those cases, but for the most part, no. <laughs> Saw this pile coming in and I thought I missed it. Oh, look at that. Okay. It's got copper. Everything else. This looks like a house clean out here. Let's see. Eh, we'll cut the ends off of those. Get the brass. Gotten to see them live a couple times. Actually, more than a couple. They've used to play this event at the city I worked quite often. So I got to hear them. 
play several times. That was cool. I like that. I love, love Blink-182. Now see, this is the chair I'll deal with. Right there. Oh, okay. Got us the Arizona Special. It was hiding. They were hiding my Arizona Special. Looks like there might be another one hiding. Oh, they're all hiding. What is this? Reverse osmosis water storage tank. Um, you know, I'm gonna leave this for now, but what I would like, I don't know what that is, okay? Was never owned one. So I don't know if uh, the yard would take that. I really don't. So y'all could fill me in. I would appreciate that. Heavy. Oh, I've gotten these things before. It feels like aluminum. All right. And now, will this come off? Let's see. It might. It might. Yep. I get a lot of Arizona specials. I'm not even calling them that now. A lot of umbrellas. Sometimes I'll get six, seven, eight in one trip. And all this material here can really fill up at your own house. So what I do is I take that and I pile it all there. Bed frames over there. Okay. Now let's see here. Don't need that. And the motor out of that. Brackets. Well, we definitely are getting our share of steel today. Not so much electronics yet, but the day is not over. Well, I'm gonna hit one more neighborhood. Well, all right, folks, since we've just taken a break, gotten us some sustenance, we're gonna do PD story time. Yes, it's that time again. And today we're gonna talk about Last time I talked about the, the, the most common calls, I left one out, and that's beer runs. Now, when you hear beer run, you might think of the song from George Jones and Garth Brooks, the B double E double R U N. No, that's some folks going, leaving a dry county to go get some beer where it's legal. This is folks who go into mainly Circle K's and steal beer. And beer runs occur, <laughs> like you would not believe and just the sheer volume of beer runs that come out I'll never forget when I was brand new I would just see these they're called attempt to locate they come across our, our screen I don't know attempt to locate this location beer run this description those those go off all day long if you knew the amount of beer that walked out of Circle K and most convenience stores it's amazing again most of the time you're not actually dispatched to a beer run they're simply what's what I referred to earlier as an attempt to locate meaning that they say okay guys and gals this this is where it occurred go to it so I'm gonna give you three examples of beer runs that I went to and I think they're pretty funny so here we go got called to a Circle K store of subject stealing beer okay doing a beer run uh, I think it was four four yeah four or five males and females in the store all taking beer at that time and one thing when you're when you're when you're a thief you got to make sure your car runs because <laughs> as I showed up to this uh, beer run I see about three guys pushing this old beat-up van down the road <laughs> and my and they match you know, the, the description that was given and I, I, I pull them over and in there I think there was two more people and the back was filled this was a minivan filled with beer <laughs> just filled with beer and they're all drunk and this was i don't know like they're how many stops they did but so there was that one so if you're gonna if you're gonna do a beer run make sure your car runs second one i pulled up to a circle k and as i'm pulling up i see a car backed in who backs into a convenience store kind of weird engine is running another weird one okay and in my city, it was actually a city code violation to leave your engine running unattended. So anyways, I wasn't too concerned about it. I go in the Circle K and 
I kid you not, as I'm walking in the Circle K, who's walking out with four loads of beer, one in each hand, one tucked under each forearm, but this dude stealing beer. We meet each other face to face, okay? And the look on his face, I will never forget. It was hilarious. So he dropped, I remember like, I think he dropped one and he tried to run and then blew me away. Customer stiff armed him and he ran into the customer's arm and he fell. I jumped on him, grabbed him. Oh yes. Okay. Here's a good one. Uh, what I used to do, I, I, I always had a pair of binoculars pretty much for most of my career until they crapped out. But so what I would do was I would sometimes at night, I would park kind of like ways away from a Circle K and just glass them like you do hunting, only I'd wait for beer runs. So there I was glassing that Circle K from across. I see this car pull in and it's got three dudes get out. Three dudes get out, they all file in, they walk immediately towards the, uh, toward the back beer cooler. They all grab four 30 packs each and then they all, and I'm watching this the whole time, and then they all walk right by the counter, and they all file out, and they get back into the car, which is parked on the side. And by then, I'm throwing it in gear, and as they're leaving, I'm coming across the intersection, and I met them right there. It was beautiful. You know, headed them off at the pass, as you could say, and got them out, and uh, there was, I think, 20 to 24, 30 packs in this car. The trunk, the back seat, the front seat, everything was full the dude in the back was like sitting like this because he had beer everywhere <laughs> it was insane so yeah there was there was that one now one last thing you might think well these this this must be an alcohol problem this must be you know these people must be all terrible alcoholics no 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 beer beer is a commodity it's a commodity it can be sold and it can be, can be sold for drugs there were a lot of places in the towns around mine and even in my town where people would <laughs> have little stores where they'd sell the stolen beer and all the other stuff that they stole and beer last when I was a cop it was like 10 bucks a 30 pack is what I was told they were they, that, that they would get they would basically fence out the beer for 10 bucks a pack you know you go in with four of your buddy got cracked <laughs> not good but that's one of the biggest reasons why, and it may be surprising. It's really not alcoholics, at least not where I was. So there you go. Beer runs, B double E double R U N. PD story time. Thanks, folks. We're going to keep scrapping. Oh, amazing. The fact that that man is no longer around is a damn shame. The world lost an amazing man. Love that guy. Oh my gosh. Is this those LOL surprise things? Oh, I remember these. <laughs> you know why I remember them? Those LOL dolls, I know nothing about them. All I know is that they were getting stolen like crazy. And I used to get calls on them all the time from Target. Man, they used to steal them from Target all the time. Okay. I'm doing PD story time again. Jeez. Another new neighborhood. Very nice. Pretty. All right. A lot of boxes. Purse. Is that a battery pack? I think it is. Money. <laughs> Isn't that what we're all looking for here? Well, looks like we got a little something there, a little something there. Just a little bit. And hot tub cover. Too hot in hot tub. That was one of my favorite Eddie Murphy skits. Another Arizona special. Yeah, that it is. So that goes under there. Go like that there.
lot of steel today. Not much electronics, but a lot of steel. Anything under here? Wire. Got a little bit of wire. All right, folks, here in Salvaging, Arizona, there is another beautiful LDS temple here in the Valley of the Sun. And we're going to do a quick wrap up of what we got today. So, a lot of steel today. A lot of steel. Uh, some electronics, uh, some wires, uh, gonna, some things I got to go through, like this bucket here, and some other buckets of things that I'm going to go through. Uh, maybe get some little goodies. We'll see. Some days you hit one out of the park, some days you get a load full of steel. So this is what we got today. We're going to keep this going. Thanks again, folks. And remember to keep salvaging in Arizona. Today we're going to be doing a little take apart video. Not going to be a breakdown. Just want to show you. This is a propane heater that I found. As you can see, it's full of all kinds of goodies. That's a fan motor I just busted out today from a different run. But yeah, so full of goodies. So I'm going to take this apart and uh, we'll pile up all the goodies and we'll see what we got well i said this wasn't going to be a film takedown but i couldn't resist so after taking out what i believe is probably the most amount of screws i think i've ever removed we'll see what's underneath this i have no idea wow look at that that is interesting huh oh wow and look all that yeah, wow this is my first time ever opening up one of these. This is pretty good. Just got a lot of goodies. Well, we're going to keep going here. Well, we're getting further. We're getting further, digging down deeper, getting closer to getting this thing done. Tell you what, this thing is a fighter. <laughs> There's a lot to this. And with the help of a punch and a big old hammer, we knocked the final two out of there and got that out. So we're getting there. Ooh, look at all that. Right, shiny copper there. Let's turn that over. Let's see. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep tearing and get it all down. With the help of a scrap run, we were able to get this thing done. Found me a Dremel. Not a knockoff brand. Actual Dremel worked. Came with a cutting wheel. Well, a lot of accessories. If I can talk. Also found me a... Uh, Almost brand new Chicago electric miter bench saw, and I was gonna scrap it, but I thought this would be great for holding big things. Like, like if I sawzall a radiator, I'll just spread those apart, just lay it on there, and sawzall it across. So, anyways, going back to what we were doing, this is the top and the bottom of it here, and as you can see, all copper, real good, all across the top, all copper. There's a little ring of steel right here. I, that's gonna be easy to get off. Uh, mainly just I used the, the little Dremel here to take off the little tabs and then was able to get this nice uh, big chunk of copper. So pretty cool. I had fun doing it. Oh, we forgot one thing. Let's also go through some of the goodies here. Got several transformers. Uh, there's one in here I still got to knock out. Brass pieces, aluminum, circuit boards, and this is most of the wire I got out of here. So, you know, was it worth the whole thing? For me, it was. I liked it. I had a good time. I thought it was fun. And... For me, that's it. Well, all right, folks. We're gonna do a quick over-engineering episode. Uh, this is on the Han Floor Sanitizer. I picked this up to take it apart just for the heck of it. And Okay, there are at least 10 screws here that I removed, two of which were hidden, okay? And this has, from what I count, at least 25. I might be off. Uh, make that close to 30, I forgot about those. And plus the security screws on each one. And that's it. <laughs> I was expecting to see, if y'all gonna tell me, I, is this some kind of battery pack? I, I don't know, I had wires going to it, but uh, got a low grade board, some long wires, but there you go. The story of the Han for sanitizer. There you well, go. I'm wrong, I will say that I'm wrong. A commenter got on me about not taking CRT TVs. Now, a lot of that was, I wasn't very well versed in them, but took one little uh thing here i think i showed you in the other video and once you get down to it off it comes so i stand corrected not saying i'm going to take the uh 50 pounders but if i find small tvs yeah i'll do that that it really wasn't that bad a few screws and we got a good amount of copper so i stand corrected
All right, folks, we're enjoying a cool breeze from just <laughs> loading this thing up. Wow, quite, quite the thing. We're doing steel, wires, and computers today, and a little bit of HMS. And before we go, I'm not sure if I showed you just how much wire we got today. This is a good, good chunk of wire. And these are the uh, computers, hard, hard drives, etc. they'll be turning in as well. So check it out. And here we are today, ooh, behind the big dumpster. We'll see where he's going, but we'll see what the weight is today. Is that 8,100? 8,100, not bad, not bad. famous landmark here in Mesa, the Buckhorn Baths Motel. But Arizona is the home of spring training. Been not the home, but many Major League Baseball teams come here to, for spring training. And back in the day, the teams would send out their players a week early to come get some rest and relaxation here at the Natural Mineral Baths at Buckhorn Baths. This place opened in the 1930s. Uh, clubs such as the New York Mets. So that's the history behind this place. But right now we're going to be talking about scrap. So today, we doubled our money on steel. We went up two cents a pound to four cents a pound. So we had 1,080 pounds of steel. Not too bad, 52 bucks. Had some HMS, that was the rotors. That was two bucks. Circuit boards, had, had that, that big box of low grade boards, a dollar. The zinc, the, the stuff from the fans, that's four dollars, 20 cents. Hard drives, dollar 21. Uh, for the laptops, got 11.51. Well, okay, folks. How about we really finish the wrap up and say how much we made? $98 and some change. Not bad. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. I really thank you guys. Thanks for coming along. We're about to hit 30,000 views on the channel. Frankly, that is blowing me away. And thank you again.